What is up, ladies and gentlemen, YouTube? That's right. I'm Chris Smith. Today, I'm going to be talking about The Choice, the movie you should not be seeing this weekend unless somebody actually has a gun to your head or somebody forces you to actually see. Now, here are the basic plot if you actually give two shits. It's pretty much about this guy named Travis and this girl named Gabby. They get together, and apparently, they have to go through this epic love journey because it's a Nicholas Sparks movie. I really don't need to fill you in on all the basics, so that's pretty much what it is. Now, for me, this movie, I was not literally looking forward to it at all, so you probably wonder, well, why did I see it? I saw it mainly because I lost a bet. I'm not going to tell you what the bet was, but it was definitely something that I probably shouldn't have betted. Um, so I went to see this thing, and I gotta be honest. I have to be honest. This shit sucked. Uh, now, granted, it's not my demographic, but for the most part, I would say this. If you're a Nicholas Sparks fan, you're going to get a kick out of this shit. Uh, if you liked it, The Notebook, you may not think this is as good as The Notebook. Now, I've never seen a notebook, right? I haven't seen it. I, I don't plan to actually see it. But obviously, the notebook is a classic among Nicholas Sparks' books, and it's the only one that really managed to actually kind of work on screen. Everything else either came across as creepy, that being the lucky ones, or just completely dumb and stupid, and that being Safe Haven. Those two movies in particular are the only ones that I really have seen, and they both were really terrible films. Now, what doesn't work in here is the fact that it's a cliche script. You know exactly where this shit is going because Nicholas Sparks does everything by the numbers and you know exactly what you're going to get. What also doesn't work is the characters. There's not an interesting character in this movie to save this film's life. Now, the two leads, they do a decent job of what they're trying to do and their chemistry is good for the most part. Um, and then the writing in here is not so good for the most part. Now, like I said, their chemistry is good, but you don't really believe their romance because it's so out there and far-fetched that you just be like, uh, sure, because there's a lot of these weird plots in Nicholas Sparks' movies uh, that you really don't believe, and apparently this is another one of them, uh, as I said. You know, like I said, uh, they really only come together mainly because of their dogs, you know. She's in a relationship with Tom Welling, yes, Tom Welling from Smallville's in here, uh, doing nothing um, except being a plot device to just get rid of because he's dating Teresa Palmer, the main chick. Uh, Tom Wilkinson's in here. Another time, two times, two wasted times. Tom Wilkinson doing nothing but collecting his 40th paycheck this week. Tom Wilkinson loves working. The white British Sam Jackson, folks. Uh, but yeah, this movie ain't gonna win over anybody. When I went to see this, it was really annoying because it was mostly women. You would think that's a positive, right? You're like, damn, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, it wasn't a positive because the women just kept on kind of like crying. And it sounded, I hate to say it, it's going to be a period joke, but it sounded like everybody was on their period because everybody was just crying. And I was just like sitting there and be like, I'm feeling awkward while sitting next to you. Um, but yeah, th that was the basic thing. Now, granted, look, this movie is a decent watch for some couples if you want to see this. But I would say this, there's probably other better couple movies out there right now that you can probably still see as a couple. It doesn't need to be a romantic movie. Because in Nicholas Sparks films, they tend to give women a bad idea as to what romance is. There ain't nobody in the world, at least from my perspective, I don't think, there's nobody in the world that's going to really fulfill this bullshit romance. Uh, you know, there's not going to be a soldier that sees a picture and, like, travels across the country like Forrest Gump and stalks your family. No. There ain't going to be nobody to do that. But apparently, Nicholas Sparks thinks the world works that way. Now, for me, Nicholas Sparks, congratulations. You succeed on making bank on all these things. But I got to blame him also because these things are dumb. Uh, like I said, this ain't going to win over everybody. This ain't nothing new. Uh, it's exactly what you see. All the Nicholas Sparks books are the exact same, pretty much. Or at least the movies. It's just different scenarios. But bit by bit, it all plays out the exact same way, pretty much. There's tragedy. There's rain. Spoiler What do you get when a Nicholas Sparks movie... Uh, has rain. I'll let you fill in the blank. Uh, and that's pretty much it. There's nothing to this film. It did irritate me because there, you know, this, this romance is just dumb. Uh, that, that's just as simple as that. Do you, should you see this movie? No, not really. Unless somebody kind of forces you, as I said, uh, with a gun. Uh, but, you know, who should see this movie? I don't know. Women? I guess they've read the book, I guess. But here's my choice. Here's my choice for you people right here. The choice is, number one, you can see the choice because somebody forced you, you wanted to actually see it, or because somebody said, let's go do it. Or you can take the other choice, and that's take a shit. Either one, that's your choices. There it is. Comment, subscribe, and like. Hopefully you actually subscribe and give me to 2 subscribers. I'll give you a shout out. Signing out.